So as you can see, there's this new add-on that I added to Blender add-ons. It's called mathformula.py and you can get it from there. I'll put the link in the description. And as the name suggests, it has to do with math formulas and as everything on this channel, it has to do with nodes. So if you go to edit preferences and install it, and then you'll get some options here. So one thing to note here is you know, these two have the same name. One of them is for attributes and one of them is without attributes. So these have different shortcuts and these are the ones you want to remember. Shift F with attributes and Alt F without attributes. So let's close this here. Now, if you're in the shading editor, Shift F and Alt F give the same thing. So how does it work? Well, when you, once you press like Shift F or Alt F, you can start typing some words. And the idea is that you type a formula like this. And what the formula has to be in reverse polish notation or postfix notation. And this just means that you place the operator like multiply after the arguments. So in this case, the arguments are four and five. And as you would expect when I press enter, this adds a multiply node with four and five as the inputs. You can do a bit more than that. Let's see. Take the absolute value of something and then we add a zero as an argument and then we take the absolute value of that zero so i'm just placing a zero here as a placeholder for a socket that we might want to connect later and then we can take the max of them so as you can see it turns green if it's recognized but it doesn't recognize maxing but if i type the full name it will recognize it again so just max is fine here and maybe I want a smooth maximum, so we can do it like that. So I make a bit more space here. So it will always place it in the last arguments. So in this case, I have to do this. Or if I don't like what I did, I can press Shift F again, and if I press the up arrow, it will give me a little bit of history. Can use the up and down arrows to navigate this history so the problem is that we need to add um, the smoothing here so something like 0 0.1 now you can see that it's uh, corrected the nodes are corrected uh, connected in the right way so that's something that you can do that's the basics for um, just the regular math nodes but if you want to more you can go to geometry nodes it uh, changes the wireframe and just as a demonstration i'll add a simple subdivision surface make this something like five so we have a bit of a geometry and here you can see if i press alt f it's still the same but if i press shift f then suddenly it turns red warning this is now using attributes so some things change here so if i do the same thing like before four five star which means four five multiply four and five together then instead of a regular math node, we get an attribute math node. And the result is set to 10. So there's this panel here where you can change like the name of the temporary attributes of the results and the name of the missing attributes and so on. So let's do something fun. Let's create some sort of sine wave coming out from the center. So you want like a gradient coming out from the center we'll just take the length so we can since we're working with attributes we can name them like this as arguments and then length and you can see that it turns blue which means it's a vector math operation if you want to do something like vector math multiply vector star or vector mult there are multiple options if it's blue it's vector math if it's green it's normal math Okay, so this gives us a length, and maybe we want to change the frequency later. So it's something like 0 0.5, and multiply that. And then we take the sign. And we want to store this result in some value. So with that, we use this arrow syntax. Again, these most of these things are only work for attributes and not for the regular math. So I'm going to move my cursor over here, press enter. 
can, you can see that it places them just like that. So I just noticed something. So let's place, make the distance between nodes 10 instead. And press the up arrow again. Now it adds a little bit of spacing between these nodes. Okay, so now we've stored it in the Z, but to actually see an effect, we have to modify the position attribute of each of these points. And for that, we can take the X and Y of the original position and then replace the Z with the, our own Z value here. So we'll press Shift F again and we'll move, uh, press middle mouse down to move it around a bit so we have a bit more space. I'm going to take the position and I'll take the XY. So if you press dot and then XY, it will take the X and Y. If XZ will take the X and Z. So now the X and Y, X and Y are attributes. And using this, these parentheses, we can create a vector. I'll make a vector with X, Y, and Z. And remember that this Z is the one that we created here. And I'll store this in the position. So this is going to override the position attribute of all of these points. So now we just plug in the correct sockets. And you can see that the position gets changed. And we can change the frequency here. Create some sort of uh, sombrero or something like that at least. And obviously you change these if we want. So let's see, we now want to add some shading, shade smooth, and I'll switch to Eevee. Now I'll add a principal shader, just some very basic stuff. And I'll take a Shift F or Alt F since it doesn't matter in shaders. And we'll do a I'll take a, I want just the X and Y, so I'll multiply the inputs with um, 110 and then take the length and yeah, maybe divided by 5 or something. So we'll plug the coordinates into here. And this into the base color. And if you want some color, we can just use a converter by an HSV. Set both of these to one. And there you go. So that's the add-on. Please, um, if you have some problems, notice some bugs or any other questions, you can file issues on GitHub. If you want to contribute, you can make a pull request or you can just leave a comment on the YouTube video itself. So yeah, 